All right. Um, it is. Oh wow, my watch and my clock really disagree. It's six oh six p.m. I'm gonna. Um, call the meeting to order. Uh, I have ensured a quorum. The meeting purpose, uh, we're going to meet with our state legislators, uh, a, a superintendent search update, and Braintree and RTCC presentation slash discussions. Um, we'll go ahead and start with public comment. Uh, the board welcomes comments but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, I've got an echo, no, no problem, <laughs> or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to by me, the chair. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can certainly express agreements with those previous comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. And with that, the floor is open. Uh, the floor is open for public comment. Please do make sure that if you're here from the comment from the public, <laughs> that you sign in on the sign-in pad. Right Oop, that's right there. Thank you, Jay. Um, so that we can have public record of attendance. Thank you. <clears throat> you Would anyone step, like? I, to I do speak? have something. I don't know whether anybody else I does. Don't. Go ahead. All right. So <clears throat> I've addressed the group. I'm Martha Hafner from Randolph Center. Anything else that I need to make sure I said? <laughs> nope, you got it. <laughs> OK. Um, and I addressed the group in August time frame on par parental rights co uh, concerns previously. This is a petition that I would like to see if it couldn't be brought before the public before a vote. Now, I realize you're saying that you can't take action on anything like it, but I would like this to be entered in as something to that effect. That there, there's wording on the back side of this about <clears throat> parental rights um, being observed and making sure that there's transparency in the uh, curriculum contents of what's being offered and also in terms of um, you know what kinds of transactions are happening at the nurse's office and things along that line that files that, that, that are held by the uh, schools are available to the public to the public to be able to see well to the parents especially to be able to see those are the kinds of things that this is addressing so <clears throat> um, there are things that have been brought to my attention there's been things that the superintendent's office has shared with me saying look our, don't we already do this um, there's places where I know that things are not happening in that accord so to what extent that that can be addressed, whether it's this or through other things, I would pray, hope that you would um, give due consideration to it. Okay. Thank you very much. So, give a copy to you. Uh, if it's something you'd like the board to have, <coughs> I can take a I copy. Send email versions of it to others, but uh, not at this time. You're welcome to. <coughs> and and the um, secretary already has one. Thank you. Anyone online? Most online. Yeah. Anyone else in the room? Okay. Can well, I ask a question? Can can you comment on any kind of turnaround time with No we can't. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, it's time for our guests. Sam, if you'd like to, to uh, introduce <clears throat> this well, agenda item. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, once, a, once a year, we invite our uh, state representatives and state senators to come on down, um, represent our district, and present to the board as to what they have going on in this legislative session and 
man, do they have an exciting session going on right now in, on the topic of ed funding. So, uh, <laughs> well, we're riveted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, Lane, if you can just keep an eye out. I, I know Senator Perchelik was going to try to make it on Zoom. Uh, and Watson had a, something come up, so she can't. And I think Mark was planning to come in person, so he may arrive shortly. But I'll turn it over to whomever well, wants to kick it off. You guys can come right up. Sure, I yeah. appreciate that. Um, uh, thank you for your introduction. This is my twin brother, full, full disclosure. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jay Hooper, represent the five towns of Brookfield, Braintree, Randolph, Granville, and Roxbury. I'm serving in my fourth term. I did do two terms on the House Education Committee. Um, so thankfully I have had enough time to become adequately familiar with the stuff that we are indeed discussing um, in Montpelier right now with quite a lot of Excitement is not the way to classify the discussion, <laughs> but um, it is certainly um, a lot of very important stuff that actually could be classified as economic crisis. So um, as for McDonald, Senator McDonald's absence currently, he's, he's potentially pretty sick right now. I talked to him today, he didn't sound great. He said he would try to make it. Um, Senator Cummings uh, has plans tonight, being that it is Valentine's Day, but she uh, hopes that you'll invite her back to engage with you all, either remotely or in person. Um, thank you all for inviting us. I'll let Larry introduce himself, and then we can dive into some of that um, uncomfortable political content. Yeah, so I'm Larry Sadkowitz, and I represent the same district as Jay. And um, I'm on the Environment and Energy Committee. This is the second year of my second term. And um, I am not an expert in education finance. I'm <laughs> still learning quite a bit about that. Um, so I'm not sure I have um, a lot to sort of proactively put out there, but I'm certainly willing to hear your questions and answer them the best that I can. And, 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 um, and any concerns, I definitely want to hear, because that's really important in forming our path forward. So I have a question just because um, I saw either in the paper that there's going to be a legislative breakfast also mm -hmm. next, is it next week or this the week after? Monday the 17th. Okay. Will you all no. be there? Is it the 19th? Yeah, yeah we'll, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, 730 yes. ETC shape. Yeah, so that might be another time that we would see the Could be. The yeah. other Folks. Okay. I'm just curious. So, well, without further ado, I'll tell you what. I'm Actually, no, they won't. Well. Oh, no, because it's Orange County, it's, isn't it? It's just Orange County. It's just. County. Well, they represent. But they the do town represent of part of Orange yeah. County, so. Uh, now, I'm not sure. Uh, after yeah. we change the districts, they have In one the, town that has implications yeah. of the decisions yeah. that you all make, so. They will be invited whether or not they decide to come, I suppose. Oh, okay. In, in a recent Front Porch Forum, um, I think Perry Kasich um, listed the people who he expects, the legislators who he expects to be there, who said they'd be there. You can do a little search, find well, we'll it. We'll see what okay. happens. Um, I'm distributing here uh, some uh, sort of a summarizing document that I fished out of the recycling bin just after we adjourned this, this evening around 5 p.m. Because There's I this figured copies you it. may, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's an interesting thing to discuss education finance in Vermont because it's such a complex topic. I'll give you all some if you'd like to. Um, or if you could, uh, thank you. Because um, particularly with so many new members, should I stand, should I stand? Oh, yeah. Where are you? Okay. So the many owl. new members in the legislature, particularly in, on the House side of things, there are um, fewer lawmakers than many. Uh, who are comfortable discussing the nature of the problems because of a lack of confidence in, in terms of like understanding what we are discussing. And that extends itself all the way to the voters. In Vermont, we have uh, traditionally protected the notion that local control is uh, essential to the budgeting process. And when we craft our budget, our state budget, the bulk of that is education spending 
and every year, as you all probably have been able to observe and could predict, education spending doesn't go down. It tends to go up, and no two budgets in the state of Vermont do not impact the tax rates of each corresponding district. Do you get what I'm saying? You all create a budget. Voters have one opportunity to have what we call local control, which is the veto power on one day of the year, right? Assuming that enough no voters get together and say, this budget figure is too high. And then they send all of you back to the drawing board to redo the work that you've done over the last several months. And so hopefully school boards that work well together figure out sort of a, a list of priorities as they do this in the event that they have to return to the work. So, as you all know, on town meeting day, those budgets are typically voted on. That's not necessarily going to be the case this fiscal year. And the reason is because we've just explored and actually passed on a voice vote, which was a little surprising to me, particularly because I can't think of a single Republican who really spoke on the matter. Um, we Democrats in the majority have an obligation to figure out what it looks like to mitigate, um, well, I'm sure you've seen in the news, uh, expected property tax hikes of as much as 18 or 22 percent. That's unacceptably high um, for reasons that are economic but also political. Um, and so this H50 uh, excuse me, H 850 was a, a swift effort to take probably the least lousy of three really cruddy options um, to, to encourage school boards, actually no, excuse me, to encourage, well yeah, school boards to go, to go on your own volition back to the drawing board and decide, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna bring down our dollar figure in our district you know, as, as far as we can. Unfortunately, we probably know that that math, of those, the math is not gonna meet the mark in terms of um, bringing down this year's additional tax burden of something around $246 million. It was projected maybe around 200, but then we had the good uh, presence of mind to ask school boards to Suggest to give us an idea of what the plan, what plans were, and that dollar figure increased uh, significantly. The reason being because uh, is everybody following along? Am I yeah. Being, okay. Act 127 of 2022 uh, was a policy that we enacted to update on the basis of equity our fund our extremely complex funding formula system. It's, the consensus is that Vermont has America's most equitable funding formula. But unfortunately, um, equity isn't really fully realized in a, and in a lot of places we're seeing the costs for education going up and the outcomes that those costs would hopefully otherwise create, in fact, diminished, uh, diminishing. And so, uh, <laughs> In, in Montpelier, we're trying to figure out what to do about that 240 some odd million dollars. And um, today we, we started with step one of what is so far being described as a three-step process to try and, I don't know, maybe relieve that figure by 50, but that's still not a good enough number in my opinion, and there are a lot of members of the General Assembly who agree that that's not going to cut it, and so we're trying to figure out how to keep the pressure on the on the chairs of the, the money committees and sort of the powers that be, the leadership in Montpelier, to continue to be creative about what it looks like to shave some some budget and also make maybe certain um, budget decisions this year to buy down this year's tax rates as we have in the, in the last several years with money that we don't have anymore so that we can just really show that we're committed to changing the funding formula. But the problem, of course, is that we've just, we've just made great strides in the direction of 
tax capacity, which is sort of fundamentally at odds with the notion of um, equitable tax burden. So, f <clears throat> Jay, for folks who don't know the ins and outs of Act 127, mm -hmm. can you explain the what what part of that bill is contributing oh, to sure. the, the increase, the significant increases in budgets? So basically, the the thrust of Act 127 was to introduce additional variables that we use to to figure out what our equalized per pupil spending is across the state and district to district. So the I think it used to be three or five variables in the past, now it's as many as eight or nine. Um, geography, English language learners, how old a child is, these types of, th that data goes into a, a, a very uh, detailed formula that that on at many stops averages, right the the um, the question of tax capacity to tax burden and what that bill did was create additional tax capacity for districts that have fallen behind because the formula doesn't quite deliver a distribution of state dollars, you know, so that. A certain standard over here is met versus the districts where, you know, the gold towns where parents can create boosters and, and you know, enhance educational opportunity because there's more wealth in those places. Um, there, we, uh, let's see, we call them weights. We updated the weights, W E I G H T. Um, and we're discovering that while nobody can argue with equity, and that's indeed the thing to strive for, we are seeing that the impacts of 127 are so incredibly expensive that we're actually in danger of destroying the entire system. And that's, that's a worse outcome than anyone you could possibly think of, because at that point, we're running the risk of allowing private interests to buy up our education system and run it the way that they want to. And that would eliminate all this democratic process, right? So the problem that I'm trying to help figure out solutions for with the chairs, and despite that they might, they might not realize it right now. I mean, I don't know if you read Seven Days, but I was quoted a few times being a little bit direct, and I, um, well, I, I beg their pardon, but I'm certainly not sorry. And uh, I uh, look to continue to try and figure out ways to um, explore a new direction because property tax, we lawmakers, I mean, I can speak for myself. I, in my eighth session, that's right, carrying out my fourth term. And so I've gone door to door several times uh, telling suggesting to voters, right, that we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're, we're working on it. We're going to fix this, this problem of higher property taxes every year. And the, the way we're going to do it is we're going to really actually dig into exploring what it looks like to shift to an income-based system, which would be generally more equitable across the board, um, we think. And we, uh, with Act 127, uh, which I supported, and it was on this basis, we uh, included a, a task force to explore what that looks like. And so they, they gave a report to the legislature in December of 2022, which is quite a few days ago. Uh, and so now we're realizing that we have such a crisis on our hands this year that thankfully it's forcing a little political will to actually, you know, maybe chart a new path, even though we've just charted an extension to the <coughs> old path, right? So, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, can, you, can you just touch on the 5% the cap and what some school districts have done to increase the burden on the headphones? So, good question. So, the 5% cap that Sam's referring to is this. 
um, privilege that the bill created for <coughs> districts that would need to increase their ca tax capacity, and they pretty much all utilized it, right? Like so many of them that we are having to actually tell them that we'd rather you didn't use that and, you know, can you please go back and, and redo, you know, the, sorry you wanted a new roof, even though that wasn't how we wanted you to spend that, and that's how you, we're going to decide to, we're hoping that you can wait on the roof. And so <clears throat> uh, we're waiting on, on data that is weeks and months away. Like, we won't know until uh, next summer. Uh, if this <clears throat> bill works, yeah. and that's pretty scary. Jay, isn't it also the case that there are districts that were not negatively impacted by 127, but saw the 5% cap as an opportunity oh, indeed, to, yeah. to, to, so to the, raise their budgets in far in excess right. of that 5%, and, and a big part of this bill yeah. is taking away that 5% cap and giving the districts which were negatively impacted an alternative way of minimizing right. the, the impact on them and at the same time take away the incentive from all the other districts to go for that extra money um, in a way which you know wouldn't have harmed them right we kind of set ourselves up for our kind of a tragedy of the commons yeah. by, uh, uh, totally. by putting in that 5% cap they had, a, they, had a, they had a loophole that would allow them to get money that they didn't necessarily need but the problem is, is if they all do that, it's going to bring the yield down for everybody, which is how much we get per student over mm -hmm. the course of time. And so it would be advantageous, you know, to find a better way. So I, I appreciate the fact that folks are working on yeah. that um, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so simply put, what Larry is describing in lane two, uh, it's some, in some, many cases, wealthy districts are utilizing this privilege that we meant for not them. I mean, we didn't say you can't do it, and that was maybe a mistake. So we probably should actually consider outright delaying 127, but we'll see in the coming days if, if enough lawmakers agree with that idea. That was, a, that was the question. What's the time frame to, if this was actually going to get passed into a law, how long would that take from where you are now? <laughs> right, right. Which, which, of course, is probably something that's not easy well, to predict. But we're running the audible. We're doing a no huddle offense on this, um, on this little. Yeah. Well, it's what we're calling the Kornheiser proposal. Yeah. Right? Well, this just went through all stages of passage. Yeah, indeed. And it's going over to the Senate. So we, we right suspended away. rules to hurry it along. So any feeling on what their opinions are about it? I think. All indications are that it should go through the Senate pretty quickly. It's, it's going to take a few days because it's going to have to go to their money, money committees first. Yeah. And then it'll go to the Senate floor and then, and then the governor will have to sign it. So it should, it'll go a lot faster than bills so right normally after go. So March 5th. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we saw a governor's signature within a week. So this sounds like you're going to get rid of that five percent. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. So this is, and this that's is an actual sort of amendment or band aid to Act One Twenty Seven. Yeah. Yep. So, but it isn't nailed down that we would force. There would be districts that refuse to do this. And well, the five, but the five percent cap is gone. Right, but there would be districts that refuse to go back. Oh, and they they could yeah so. So yeah. part of this legislation gives districts the, op the option to go back and redo their budgets and have an extended timeline to, to have a vote. So you don't have to have a vote on town meeting day like you normally would. This bill allows, I can't remember what the, how much extra time, but so I think a, a couple of months of maybe a month of extra time to take, to take a vote if you decide, okay, actually, given this new bill, we don't want to keep our current budget. We're going to go back, make some changes, and then put it in front of the voters like in April instead of March. Right. So if you increased your budget by 10% over that 5% cap, you've got a pretty big incentive to go back and relook at it if you aren't going to get that. Yes, that's the idea. Protection of that 5% cap. Because if I understand correctly, if you were going up 
you weren't going to be held responsible for that. You were going to be allowed to just keep it at a 5% increase. Right, yes. right. exactly. So Precisely. that means that they would, the boards would have to face the voters to say, sorry, we're increasing 10%. I would imagine that would have an impact on the, prop the local property tax yes. mm -hmm. bill. The, yeah. the quirky part of it is the 5% the cap is on the tax rate. The 10% cap is on the overall spending per student. Mm -hmm. So it's really quirky. I don't know why they did that split. There must have been some <coughs> logic to it, but it makes it quirky about, you know. Price. So it's not that straightforward, what I was just saying. Yeah. Okay. No, the, ba basic, well, uh, the basic gist yeah, of it, right? If, yeah. you, if you can't, if you wanted, if you wanted to spend way, way above, but and only have a 5% impact on your, 5% uh, impact on your tax yield, then, and now you're going to remove the 5% uh, cap, then your taxpayers are going to ultimately set, their taxes are going to go up, the and they're either going to vote down your budget, or the legislature is going to give you the opportunity to go back to the drawing board, redraw your budget, and do what sounds like Governor Scott wants to do is mail in ballots to try to streamline it. And and mm -hmm. because one of the other issues of deferring the vote from town meeting day is voter turnout right. will inevitably be significantly lower unless you approve universal mail in ballots. And so in our case we were nine point nine percent below the five percent cap because yeah. we, we had a windfall we're act, actually at least on the school side when you take the CLA out we're actually asking for over 14 cents less per hundred dollars of assessed value <coughs> than, now, than we were the year before now we made that decision strategically because of the cliffhanger right um, no we, we started out there and then when they gave us the correct numbers the month later yeah um, we ended up we are so far below the five percent we would have had to increase our budget by like five or six million dollars to take advantage of the five percent cap just that, that would be crazy um, so as far as we're concerned the, uh, the five percent cap doesn't even come into play we're so far below it and Lane, is it true that my understanding is that that's because <clears throat> Our district is one of the ones that that benefited from yeah. the to, by the change in weightings from Act 120, yeah. um, from 127. Yeah. So my my expectation, and you you could correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is we're actually in pretty good shape compared to most of the state, um, especially in terms of the, the voters and what they're going to see and experience. Most of their increase is going to be around their property tax increase side, the CLA piece. Mm -hmm. um, but the changes that you're potentially making and proposing with these laws will probably not affect us too much. Correct. If anything, we'll either stay neutral or if it prevents a lot of districts from trying to game the system, it will, might actually benefit us because the yield will go up. Right. Right. Um, so and that was always going to be true. Yeah. yeah. So, but not to buy very much. Like we were in the middle, and we're probably on the good side of the middle. Yeah. Or the, the, the nice side. The, yeah. yeah. And so, what's what is? I I'm not up completely up to speed on what the thinking is around education and property taxes in the three towns right now. Where what are we looking at right uh, right now um, compared to last year? So on the like I said, I split it up into this is the impact because of what the schools are doing. Um, and then this is the impact because of the property tax, right? Because property values have gone up considerably. So you get that, that CLA that comes in here. I can actually pull it out. Give me two seconds. Uh, so on the school side, we've actually been doing really well here. It's been the, the, the CLA that's been kind of killing us. Budget information. So in 2022-23, if you're just looking on the, the school side, so right, our expenses have been going up, but our revenues have been going up faster. Um, so in 22-23, we were asking for 7.5 cents less per $100 of assessed value. 23-24, mm -hmm. we were asking for 7.2 cents less per $100 of assessed value. And then for next year, on the school side of things, we're asking for 14.9 cents. Uh, per hundred dollars of assessed value less. So on the school side, we're doing really well. On the 
overall impact when you add the CLA component into things, um, things are going up. So if you've got a $250,000 property, right, so we'll use that as the basis. Um, if you're in Braintree, you're looking at your taxes going up $343, in Brookfield $388, and in Randolph $196. But most of that is due a little bit to the reset. There was a, a reset of the T1 <coughs> tax rate um, when Act 127 came into place. And then most of that's due to the fact of right, the, the state survey that they do to say, you know, where are you relative to, where are your assessments in your town relative to um, what things are actually selling at? And so, so this is because their properties are worth more. They've got to pay more taxes on yeah. the value of their properties. Do you, do you know what the, what the corresponding percentage increases are? Ah, uh, I can probably find that. Small. Make sure I got the right one. Twenty-three, twenty-four. Give me two seconds. I got all the sheets here. I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right one because we did a lot of. So the the tricky thing too is the politics of this discussion are such that, like as I said, we've got extremely high level concepts being talked about by people who are in a position to make some pretty impactful decisions individually. And uh, doublespeak sometimes uh, creeps its way into these public, these, um, <laughs> into public discussion. So tax capacity and tax burden are two different angles that you can argue for similar things. And so some lawmakers are suggesting, like, because we're tinkering on this formula, with time we might see property tax relief. It's probably not true, and we probably know that. So we got to kind of make some difficult discussions about how to change gears, um, because this formula has too many com components that are just fundally, fundamentally at odds with each other. So on the, the school side, um, taxes are down almost 10%. When you add in the CLA, taxes are up. Um, and so in Braintree, they're up 8.7%. Brookfield, they're up 12.2%. Randolph, they're up 7 point, or excuse me, 4.7%. So again, like I said, a lot of our impact, most of our impact is just because the property values have been going up, changing the CLA between years. Yeah, no good questions. Good conversation too. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, you're out of prison. <laughs> go back you, and go, who's back, older? go fix it. Sam is <laughs> 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 Some people get that, right? So, um, so the other thing minutes. that I saw um, that comes through to us as board members is um, the changing uh, sort of mandating hybrid meetings. Oh, yeah. Um, and I believe either you're in, there's some sort of hearing coming up on Friday. Um, for our district, you know, we're doing fine, like but, but I can recognize that other districts that are smaller, that may not have the technology that we have, I read something somewhere, and I would agree with that side, that maybe you can have the law say it's okay to do a hybrid meeting, but you're not going to mandate that everybody do a hybrid meeting. One of the benefits of the hybrid meetings is we definitely get more people mm -hmm. engaged. Mm -hmm. um, and they may just come on briefly for public comment, but at least they can see what we're doing, yeah. you know, and it is, I mean, people are busy, so it is nice to have that option for folks, so I would love to be able to see that happen. I'm not sure I would agree with mandating it, just because you're already school, many schools are pressed with funding, and just, you know, having to spend well, the money to get the technology to make it all happen and have it a mandated thing, I would err on the side of make it a possibility, but let's not sure. mandate it. No, I tend to agree with you. And that um, happens to be in my committee. Uh, 
we're looking into open meeting law and what it, what it means for the future of digital engagement and what the law should require in, in the way of yeah, standards. So um, appreciate that. Yeah, good thing. Um, that so now I'm on House Government Operations and Military Affairs. That's my current committee. Uh, environmental issues. You talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. anything else? Anybody want to? Do we know how much it, the setup is here? I mean, and aren't I most know. we bought it, we bought it all with escrow funds? Yeah, but are, and aren't most of those school districts like they they already had to have hybrid meetings in the past, right? So, uh, or did I they? I don't know. Someone, I don't know. They, they didn't. They weren't already the required. Wasn't already. They were a pandemic requirement. Yeah, they were. They were remote. Most most places did it. Um, it was kind of funny. Like I was in another district the other day. They weren't. They weren't using owls or anything, but they somehow managed. I didn't quite figure out how they, what their setup was. Um, yeah, it seems to me there are simpler. I I find myself actually disagreeing with you, Anne, which surprises me. But in terms of access and equity, it seems to me that that mandating it is the only way to make sure that it's accessible to homebound people mm -hmm. or you know that. sure well yeah and of course you don't want one to draw from the other you know you don't want that being available to somehow lessen the reality they got put five warnings in certain places in the town and physical you know, a physical place to go should be an option for people who don't have internet. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. So same right. Kind of hybrid. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that's interesting. Talk more. Well, and then there's the connectivity. Yeah. Yes. Everybody has right. internet, it's, and you know, so that's where I just completely reliable. I just get a little nervous about mandating it until we're all kind of have access. Well, mandate to try. How about yeah. that? It's a mandate to try. So we got tough encourage. decisions. That's yeah. why I said encourage. I think there will be more. Uh, of course, Act 46 was a really controversial policy endeavor that took quite a few years to. That was a pretty heavy lift for the lawmakers who were there at the time. Neither of us were. Um, I like to claim that I would have voted no. <laughs> no idea if that's true or not, uh, <laughs> because I wasn't there. But um, we're going to have to have more consolidation type discussions for certain places. Mm -hmm. you know, For instance, St. Albans has a town in the city, and their schools are miles apart. You could find savings in those types of scenarios. Um, not to pigeon, not to point, not to target them. But, um, so I think, uh, well, thank you for all the work you do. I, this is, I always tell people, you know, I'm, I'm a lawmaker, and that's a fairly thankless job, but I don't want to be my twin brother. He's a, <laughs> he's a glutton for punishment school board member. That sounds like well, now I feel really motivated to yeah, continue yeah. our meeting. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, Jay. You guys are done with us. No more questions or thoughts for us. We're all good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for having us. Thank Appreciate you very the invitation much. Very much. Thank you. I didn't see anybody come in online. I was. <clears throat> oh yeah. Well, and I. Yeah. Hopefully they'll they'll come. But they've been busy. Yeah. Yeah. So. They had to deal with the Roxbury Montpelier School Board meeting last night, yeah. which I regret missing, because Roxbury is in a very different place than. than so, so what places. are they doing with Roxbury? Did they decide? I think they probably did, and actually, I, I didn't read the article because I was just somebody sent me my quote, which was just two words, and you could probably imagine what those are. Yeah, well, I'll say, well, I'll say, <laughs> we just no, nobody will take the school too. We just they'll take. We'll all take the kids. Oh, okay. yeah, but, we will, but it's the school that's the problem because of the additional costs. And they want, of course, problem. their biggest priority is keeping the school open, and it's one of those things that like. That's yeah, touching on people's values, and that's a tough mm. thing. That's very tough. Yeah. Like, I figure out a way to eat cake and keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both very much. We appreciate your time. Okay, um, we're moving on to monitoring organization. We're going to start with RTCC update. Happens to be on the list first. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. My chairs are very uneven. You all almost saw me fall off earlier. Can't you have kids fix those? 
I'm sure we can. It's kind of a burn right there. Um, I have three three slideshow that I showed earlier to the Rab. I don't know if you want me to plug in and do that or Thanks. just talk. I mean how, how what would you prefer my intention personally with these so-called presentations <laughs> is very informal and okay, more of a kind it. of conversation but Sounds if that good. will help you no, no, I mean it's okay visual learners are just as important as <laughs> talky learners so yes no I don't need to do that I I am quite fine um, here, but thank you. I wasn't sure yeah. if you were like dying to see it. Um, <laughs> so um, things at RTCC have gone beautifully so far this year. Um, one update is that we have a new work-based learning coordinator that's going to be uh, starting in that role um, in two weeks. Um, which I'm very excited about, but he is currently a long-term sub for one of our teachers who is on an amazing journey um, in Abu Dhabi. Um, he built a boat and he is sailing it across the ocean. Um, and so he will be back <laughs> when he comes back the week after break. Then Marty McMahon will join us as the work-based learning coordinator. Um, and I have been doing that um, in the interim. Um, let's see, we have gone out to our sending schools and we have done a bit of recruitment. It's been pretty fun and exciting. Um, we have had presentations, uh, throwing t-shirts out into the audience, um, bringing <coughs> our food truck and having cookies that we give to the kids, um, showing videos that are made by the film program and um, bringing lots of pictures and students to talk about their experience teachers to talk about what it's you know what the programs are like so um, we we've definitely had a lot of fun with that and then we've had those students come and tour our TCC and they came for three and a half hours they went to each of their programs of their top three programs of interest for an hour each and then had lunch with our school counselor and now our teachers are in the process of looking at the applications and deciding based on the rubric that we created, you know, accepted students, waitlisted students, um, and other uh, categories. So um, yes, so we're very excited about that. Um, let's see, and I wanted to share that we have um, upcoming, uh, Vermont Works for Women will be with us in March. Very excited about that, so that is aimed at girls and gender expansive youth in grades six through nine um, and we are bringing back summer camp and so we're hoping to have right now I, I think I have um, four four maybe five people that said that they want to teach summer camp um, things ranging from automotive to Rosie's girls which is done through um, Vermont works for women and um, and kind of a, a bunch of other things in between, possibly some culinary um, things. We're, we're really nailing stuff down. I really get it. I think people are having a hard time thinking of summer when it's like snowing. But, um, but yes, I did get a significant interest in teaching at least a week of summer camp. So I'm excited about that. Um, other than that, Can that's, oh, yes, please, that? of course. Um, summer camp will be for what age range? Um, grades six through eight. Six through eight. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and the one other uh, big thing that I'm super excited about is that we're trying really hard um, to build a barn before the end of September um, so that we can expand our agricultural program to also include um, animal husbandry and veterinary science. Um, and we, I feel that the animals will help a lot with social emotional learning as well as um, the veterinary science fields and um, connecting students with the things that Vermonters do, like make, uh, you know, raising chickens, cheese, milk, shearing goats, raising animals. Um, taking care of them, becoming a farrier. Those are a lot of the interests that kids have had, and I think that those will really um, be a big draw for students to want to be part of that program. 
Um, so that's one thing that we're working really hard on. And um, last thing that I wanted to share is that we are looking to have uh, an academy program, which would be sort of um, like a higher level program. And by higher level, I mean it would um, be looking at students absences, their grades, their abilities in math, ELA, and science, and looking at students that are thinking about college and higher level careers, and um, offering them easier pathways to college after RTCC. Um, so that's one thing that is, is really something that we're focusing on, is that RTCC is both for college and career readiness, um, and that they go hand in hand if you so choose. Um, and that there are options for students no matter what their path is. They can take online classes, classes at RU, um, and, and that where they should support them either way. So that is my update. Any questions? Yeah. Um, we'll start with questions from the board and then, and then take from the, from the public. I did have one question. It sounds yes. like with this Vermont woman, woman works, works for works for, for women. women. Thank you. Yes. Um, you're addressing that, but just seeing the kind of uh, discrepancy in male to female ratio of students. Yeah. Um, just trying to see how to bring uh, like greater diversity in that sense in, and especially also you know we we saw in here um, BIPOC LGBTQ. G LGBTQ um, plus community as well, and just attracting yes. kind of more of that diverse student body to RTCC. Yes, we, we definitely want students to feel that it is a safe place to be who you are, express yourself, um, and, and that there's something for everybody here. There really, really is. Um, and I think that the more people come and visit and come and, and see and meet people and see what our community is like, because we're like a big, family over there because we're small but we're do you know what I mean we're like you know um, I think that once students come and actually see and visit and experience they'll they'll realize oh this place is really cool mm -hmm. that's pretty cool over there <laughs> Chelsea did you have a question I'm just curious about the barn and the animal situation and if you could just expand on that a little bit Yes, so it's still in development, um, but the hope is that it would become an expansion of the agricultural program that already exists. And it would include all different aspects, and we would need to work with a curriculum coordinator and uh, experts to see you know, what exactly we're going to spend our, our time focusing on. But it could even be a switch where some, where students participate for part of the year and the animal side of things and then part of the year and what they already do now, which is a lot of um, outdoors, woodsman kind of um, classes, sugaring, um, and then, you know, I'm imagining beekeeping and all things animals and kind of like the, the joining of both of those things to give kids a really well-rounded agricultural experience. So do you have a plan for the barn? Like, how big is it? Can I ask you how, how big the current so, projection yes, is? Absolutely. They, they don't know you applied for a grant either for it. So the yeah. funding here would be from uh, the ARP ESSER funds, which are expiring um, this year in September. And so we analyzed the previous budget and found pockets where the full amount budgeted was not spent. And we would be returning approximately 200 to 250,000 back to the federal government. So I wrote a proposal to build some structures. Um, and so the proposal, and I always use language like approximately, right? Like, so there's room. Uh, I have proposed approximately a 30 by 40 foot barn with a classroom space and uh, they advise, I originally called them stalls, but they advised that I change them to small group spaces so we could use them for anything. <laughs> um, but I'm anticipating a 30 by 40 foot barn with a classroom, a, with a kitchen and a bathroom on the site where Raven previously was. Okay. Right? Because there's already a septic there. Uh -huh. where, where was it previously? It was uh, 
far far as you can go that way. Um, so where the tech center is, yeah. um, you, there's that one big garage that's got the seven bay, the seven doors. It mm -hmm. was to this side of that. So there's still, um, the water is capped off. Mm -hmm. They might have to replace the septic, but they did leave the septic in situ, but there, there is water there. Yeah, and, electric, and electricity also. We, we preserved all that in case we wanted to do something with it in the future. But building with federal funds has very strict rules around it. Mm -hmm. So right now we're just getting approval to even go to bid. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for that approval before we can even put out the bid and then we have to open it for bids and then we'll hope to break ground when the snow melts and get it built fast. Because it's gotta be done by? September 30th. <laughs> <laughs> so you would be maintaining animals on property then too? Yes. Or maybe they could visit. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah, we had thought about boarding animals or having so how, visiting how animals. PTC mm -hmm. does yeah. it with their um, yeah. With so with I was their program. that was going to be my question: is have you been in touch with the Sustainable Agriculture Program at Vermont State and University Randolph I now? Not, yeah. Of, well, uh, yeah, and they have a vet tech program there too. They have it's a vet tech yeah. program, yeah. and Very they well have attended. Sustainable Ag. I'm not sure how well the Sustainable Ag has done through that merger. I don't know if it's still in existence, but it's worth probably mm -hmm. making those connections because they Absolutely. might have some advice or some ideas about sort of where the needs are. Right, hundred percent. Yes. So. Yes. And are you still maintaining the glasshouse greenhouse? On the mm -hmm. property here or is that being is that still used I, feel like. um, yeah. I don't know for sure that anything do you know of anything being currently grown in there I, I do not know of anything currently being grown but I know that they're it's used annually there okay. yeah. I know that um, there was talk about using it soon mm -hmm. so currently I'm not sure like this moment but soon Yes. It had a major reconstruction, I, yeah, like two, two, three years back. Something. Yeah. I remember it was wasn't being used for a while because it needed a renovation. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. and they got a really nice all that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there used to be an annual plant sale out of there mm -hmm. years back. Mm -hmm. okay. Heather, I have a question. Um, can you explain the September thirtieth date? Is that when the grant funds would expire? Yes. Okay. And so, anything that we purchased we need to have received by then mm -hmm. okay but i anticipate honestly that this project will exceed the amount of money we have so i think we will have spent that much money on it and then may have to invest a little bit of finishing touch money mm -hmm. for example say the drywall's not in but the structure's there and the roof is there right okay so um, I'm just trying to not return money to the federal government. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the September 30th is the date that it would expire. Well, they only gave us 7.5 million over three years. Yeah, only. Mm -hmm. uh, another question I have based off of that one is where would the funds draw if you did not get it done by September 30th? Right, any finishing touches or that were finishing, like, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. flooring, whatever, we mm -hmm. would have to either um, use our current facilities funds okay. or request reserve funds. Okay. I'm going to try really hard to get it all the way done, but okay. we'll see. You know how those, from your years here on the board, how those projects go. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I have, I have one more quick question. Um, uh, I know there were some programs that were having some fairly low enrollment and there was discussion mm -hmm. of whether or not those programs would potentially continue mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. um, is there concern about any of the current programs not, <coughs> or I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot with that, but is there any, no, like, I, and if you don't want to answer, that's fine, but um, I'm just curious. Um, well, one of our programs, um, the education program, education services does have four students and they are all graduating. This year, um, and so we have one student that has applied for next year, and we have another student that um, I spoke to today that said that they are applying. So that's two, um, and we met with the um, agency of education today, myself and the instructor, to talk about um, what are some alternate pathways that we can go to get kids excited about becoming teachers. And mm -hmm. so the last time we had a RAB meeting, I had talked about an idea um, for using outdoor education as a catalyst to get students interested in education in general. Um, 
and so I did apply for a grant for that, but the Agency of Education's um, outlook is that they, they are looking for classroom teachers, mm -hmm. and that's where they want to put their, their money. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, the result of our meeting today, and we're gonna mock up some um, posters and some advertising materials, myself and the instructor, um, but what I got from today's meeting was that it would be okay to advertise the education program by way of saying the education program teaches all the components to become a teacher in pre-K through 12 or school counselor, but we also do it through means that are non-traditional, not just sitting in a classroom, but maybe that we are also kayaking and we are talking and we're learning and we're adventuring and we're doing those things outside too um, as a way to um, to gain interest mm -hmm. and maybe to rope some people in and get them to realize that oh my gosh I really do love teaching and, and helping shape young people and I could do this indoors or outdoors it, it doesn't matter I love it you know or I could incorporate outdoor education or you know alternative ways of learning um, so I think that even though the focus is still going to be really what it currently is, we're going to try to make it, we're going to mm -hmm. make it more exciting and take it out of the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, so that's the plan right now. I just have a, I'm on another board. Okay. I'm on the Orange County Parent Child Center board and we are in the process of trying to build and st or renovate and staff the building near on halfway up 66. One of our biggest concerns is staffing. We are, we are terrified <laughs> about finding staff. So I don't know if there's a disconnect between, because we've also increased our pay. So a full-time infant room teacher mm -hmm. can 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 come away with forty five thousand dollars a year okay so I don't know if that I, I hmm. know because I was in the field of career counseling mm -hmm. and for the longest time we were I would have young people who wanted to to go into daycare and sure and working with really young children and the pay was horrible yes it was not a livable wage right. and so I was constantly steering them to other options um, and so I, I think we're seeing the lag of that now in that there's not a lot of interest um, so I don't know uh, we're working with a number of different people, including someone from, I believe, the state. Well, she's a consultant. Uh, should have been in touch with with you folks because we're that really is, we're yeah. trying we're shaking the trees, just trying to let people Our know. Our program currently has four students that are graduating from the program, and they might really be potentially we want, great We people. aren't going to be ready now because okay. we're renovating a building and we're trying to do it all with grant funding. Um, we're not going to be ready now. It's been pushed back to January of 25, and that isn't a start date necessarily. Well, think about it like this. If the if what we're doing works, and I, I have faith that it will increase numbers, it may not be dramatic for next year, but I, I think it's going to get some people interested yeah. by 2025. 20, that, yeah, it probably be, us, yeah, it'd be the summer of 2025. Yeah, that gives or, us some time to. At least the fall of 2025, hopefully, if right. everything, you know, yeah, align some stars. Be but, in touch about that because we yeah. could be a direct pipeline to. Yes, and, and that's one of the other you. things we've talked about is just even being an internship site for. Yeah, I'm uh, sure that there are students who would absolutely love to do co ops with you. Yeah, yeah that'd so, be great. In the interest Perfect. of the mm -hmm. the agenda, I'm, Chelsea, you had something to say, and Martha, you had something to say. So, um, w nope, you're shaking your head now. You take it back? No, I'm going to, so two more speakers, and then we'll move on. Go ahead, Chelsea. All I have to say is I think it's exciting, the idea of bringing in new programs like 
maybe a vet program in agriculture and whatever else is out there. And Thank you. there are lots of kids, I think, who would be interested in that. Thank you. I, I think so, too. <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks. Martha. And so I was just going to say, I mean, one of my lines of questioning was along the lines of the barn as well. Yes. But uh, the other question, you might not be able to answer on the spot. So um, I'm curious to know what kind of numbers you're seeing at RTC that are um, moving on for coll college um, application. I don't have those numbers like off the top of my head. Um, I would have to look that up and get back to you. Is there a way? Ballpark present? percentage, anything that you can comment on? Or This is my first year at RTCC, so I just don't feel like I have, I, I, don't, I can't even guess right at this moment, but I could get back to you. Okay. Um, does someone have your contact info? No. Okay. Indeed. Yep. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very thank much you. for coming and, and uh, thank you for having me. Answering our questions on the spot. That's oh, it's fun. Thank you. <laughs> Have a and good night. <laughs> now, I'd like to welcome Patty, but I'd also like to express a public apology that you are here for the second time, just as prepared, if not more, um, that we had messed up last time on our, on our agenda. So thank you very much for being here again. And come and join us. Oh, thanks for having me. I love to talk about brain tree, <laughs> uh, like a lot. I really like it, <laughs> so I am happy to talk to you about it today. Great. I do have some slides because I am a visual learner and yep. need to kind yep. of ground myself. Um, and so, <laughs> great. <laughs> Cool. So I'm not sure I've met everybody in the room. My name's Patty Sprague. I'm in my second I'm in year, my second year as a principal at Green Tree Elementary. So here so is some, here of, our is some of our faculty. It's a it's remarkable, a remarkable group, group of skilled, skilled folks, folks who are really dedicated, really dedicated to the achievement, to the achievement of, every of every student in our building. In our building. We have 26, we have 26 staff, staff members that serve members seven homerooms, home pre-K pre to, pre to, pre to, pre to grade six. We also host we an after-school after program, after program that offers academic, that academic tutoring, tutoring and enrichment activities. And, activities. and our staff and members' staff interests and strengths and backgrounds are really varied, which leads to a really cohesive, collaborative team of people that we have. And then these are our and kids, are our kids the best part. <laughs> we, have we have about 101 students, um, again, in preschool, um, again, in through, preschool grade through grade six. And they're the best, and part, they're of the best part of school. We're really proud, we're really of, proud Green Tree of Green Tree School. Uh, we were recently uh, we were named number five elementary, elementary school, school in the state of Vermont. Um, something that we're even, more, that we're proud even more proud of is that, of we, were is that we were the only school, school in the top 25, in the top 25 with a poverty with a rate over 25%. Rate over 25%. Um, each year, um, each the year, Agency of the Education, as you know, creates you know, snapshots, snapshots of schools. Of schools. Um, they, um, score they score education, education quality standard, standard domains, domains, and we exceeded, and we exceeded expectations, expectations in three out of the four of those domains. Of those domains. Um, academic um, proficiency, academic safe, safe and healthy schools, and, schools, and high quality and high staffing. Quality staffing. Um, um, Go ahead. Go ahead. What is investment, what is investment priorities? priorities? Or is that like what falls into Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So, so I imagine that Lane and Heather could speak more to that. More to I, that. I, from, I, my, from my, from what I know, from what I know it's, capital it's capital investments to facilities, to facilities um, things um, like that. Things like that. Also, it's also it's staff ratios. Um, do you, um, do they'll, they'll rate you rate high, you high if, if they feel you, they have, feel the you right have the right number of staff to students. If you have too many, they'll rate you low. If you have too few, they'll rate you low. So they've got a little sweet spot that they target. We have three priorities, have three priorities that can undergird our, our instructional decisions. decisions. We want students, we want to, have students connections to have connections to their community, to, their community, to, the, natural to the natural world, and, world, and to be prepared to achieve their dreams. So to speak a little, so bit, about a little bit about community about connections, connections. We, build we build community by making really, really intentional connections for our kids. For our kids. We, invite we invite experts in their field, in their to, our field to our school. We incorporate, we incorporate a variety, a variety of, of perspectives, within, perspectives our within our lessons, and we provide a lot, of, provide leadership a lot of leadership opportunities, opportunities for kids. For kids. Um, this year, um, we've this welcomed, year we've welcomed experts, experts in forestry. In forestry. We've had bread and we've puppets had circus in. We've had a good name drummer come in. Right now, there's an artist in residence at our school. We're performance here tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, superintendent candidates. 
candidates. Come join us in the auditorium, 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 auditorium at six. Um, to um, the members from the Randolph Volunteer Fire Department, Volunteer Fire Department and, a and, others. and a few others. I have a lot of beautiful, have a lot pictures, of beautiful pictures of, of from our field trips, our field to, the trips to the Vermont Institute of Natural, Natural, Natural Science, to Starbase, to other places that kids go. What I chose to share with you tonight is a picture of two reading buddies. Um, this um, program this is program spearheaded is by our veteran, veteran literacy, literacy teacher, Janie, teacher Jacobs, Janie Jacobs, and it matches our, and it youngest, matches our youngest learners, with our, learners oldest. with our oldest. Each week, Each intermediate, week intermediate students pick a book, and they write questions, they write questions to discuss, to discuss with their primary, with their primary counterpart. counterpart. And I love and I spending love time with our fifth and sixth graders in the library because they're because just so interested in what their partners are interested in. And they're like, no, I need to look about dumb tracks because that's what my buddy wants to read about. It teaches older kids to be flexible and compassionate Models, models. Um, and it's a really, um, beloved, it's a really brain beloved brain tradition. Brain tradition. We're, really proud of. We're really proud of. We're really proud of. Um, upon um, direction upon from the superintendent, from the superintendent earlier, in the year, earlier in the year, I asked, I asked our stakeholders um, in various um, roles what we'll we'll comes to mind when they think about our school. And our outdoor, and our outdoor programming, programming was one of the things one of the that things comes, things to, mind comes to mind first for folks. We are on a beautiful, on a beautiful 17, 17 acre campus. Acre campus. We have a really so strong farm to school program. Um, each month, um, each month, Farmer Ann visits. Visits. Ann visits. She leads students she leads in gardening, and gardening, and harvesting, and harvesting, and cooking, and, cooking, and, and eating that we grow, that we grow in our raised, raised garden beds. Teachers have, Teachers have access, access to dedicated, to dedicated outdoor, outdoor classroom classes, classes, spaces, spaces, which is from everything from, from everything a nice and read, read aloud in the sun, to a preschool, preschool program, which is primarily outdoors every day. Every day. Um, um, and the abundance from the land, land also allowed us to open allowed a farm open stand a farm called, Green Tree, called Green Tree Blossoms. And that farm stand that provides, farm stand opportunities, provides for opportunities for kids to learn real business, learn real business like marketing, like marketing and, pricing and pricing and inventory. And, inventory. and it also serves, and it also as, another serves as another connection, to our, connection to our community. We have, um, we have a, few um, a few local producers, producers, local who, have producers who have items on consignment at the farm stand, which is pretty exciting. Um, we were really um, fortunate we really recipients fortunate of a grant that brought in our students, our students last year, year from the electrical, from the electrical and construction, construction trades to outfit the farm stand with, with solar power. Um, um, yeah, and we're yeah, really and excited. We're really excited. Um, um, the board recently the board approved, approved, as you know, funding, you know, funding for an ADA trail, around, trail the around, the property. around the property. It's really exciting, it's really to, be exciting to be able to welcome even more people, even more to, our people to our grounds. So thank you. Yeah, thank well, you. Is that, is that done? Is it constructed or is that going to be? Yeah, universe yeah, access. Um, they're starting in the summer. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. and when we get back from the break, actually, the team that was involved in that is meeting the sculpture artist, the Vermont Arts Council, is accepting, um, grant, accepting grant applications about installing art in infrastructure. In infrastructure. And so and we're working with a local artist to see if we put some recycled metal structures, metal structures along the trails, along the trails which we're really excited about. about. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What are you powering with the solar so, so um, it has um, it outlets has inside, so eventually, so eventually we also have a mini fridge, fridge in there, so eventually, there. eventually, so eventually we'd like to stop that. more of that. Um, even just um, power, even just so it's pretty dark, so right, pretty dark now. right now. <laughs> you know, we have, you know, when, we we have, have when we have evening events, events um, it'll be nice um, to have some power to the power to the building. Yeah. 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 And is it worth it? I mean, it's so close. It's so close. Is it battery or is it going to feed that to the grid? Yeah, it's tied to the grid. It's tied to the grid. They just, they, the, just the, they just got the they just meter got the meter the meter and so we're working with the mountain power. power. Okay. So, okay. You're, so you're, so this is it's not quite it's done. Not quite not done. You're, you're working. You're, you're working. Cool. It's still in the But the kids still are still watching, watching, watching the process. process. Oh my gosh, they were oh so gosh, involved. Were so it was really wonderful. We had a committee. They had a kind of applied to belong to this committee. And students from the tech center came over and they gave us some of their ideas. And then the kids had their own ideas. Like a lot twinkle lights. Kind of a dream of what I could. Be. And, and they came up with a lot of different, lot of different proposals, proposals and we talked and about the talked funding, about sources funding sources and the sustainability, and the sustainability of it. Of and it was and a really it was a fantastic, fantastic partnership, partnership actually between, actually between, between sixth graders, fifth and sixth graders, graders, sixth graders, sixth graders, and the students from the tech center. The tech center um, students got students got practice, 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 practice presenting to clients, to clients right? And it was nice for our kids to be clients too and take that kind of role. It was really nice. It was really nice. Yeah. Yeah.
Um, and then um, it's and important then to us that our students that are prepared, are prepared for, wherever for wherever the future wherever takes, the them. takes them. The district's new the portrait, district's of, a new portrait of a graduate really helped us pinpoint, really helped us pinpoint the, exact the exact skills and competencies we're helping students we're helping develop. Students develop. Um, academic, um, proficiency academic proficiency is the top priority. Top priority. Teachers, work teachers work closely together, closely together in, order to in order to assess and address any misconceptions or skill gaps. Our intervention team is really responsive to student needs. And they work diligently to bring all kids where they need to be academically. Um, I talked a little um, bit about, little leadership, bit about experiences. leadership experiences. This year I started the student, student council. So we have about, so we 10, have to about 10 to 15 kids that meet every other week during lunch and during recess. Lunch and recess. We, connect we connect with each connect other and, each we, other talk and we talk about opportunities, opportunities for school for improvement. School improvement. Um, our work um, is entirely, entirely based, based on, on student, student interest. interest. So this year, so this year um, they decided um, to focus on playground improvement and increasing our after school programming. Um, um, fifth grade fifth science grade assessments science were an assessments area were an of area relative of weakness relative historically, weakness when, historically I when I came in. So we adjusted, so we adjusted um, by incorporating STEM, STEM as a special, as a special for, all for all of our students, K to students, six, K to six, and by having, and by uh, having dedicated, uh, dedicated science class and instructor, and instructor for, our, for our, intermediate our intermediate students. And we were in our STEM lab last time, but I'll ask you to recall the space where we were. We had some really generous funding from our local budget for science, and also grants from the Vermont Institute of Math and Science, and the Lawrence and Howell Foundation. We made a lot of material improvements to that space. We call it the library. I can't wait to tell Jeff Green that got a laugh. He's going to be so excited. And so we have a 3D printer. We have a silhouette, silhouette cutter. We have a class set of most hand tools, tools in our library. We've been really fortunate to get a lot of donations, from, donations from, folks from, like Porch Porch from Porch Forum. Um, we've had a lot of um, support, we've had a lot of support from our community, from our community, which, community which has been really great. Um, um, we've been able to we've do been some able to wide do STEM events, which is really exciting. Which really exciting. In November, in for November, for Sunday, we had a school wide marble run. And every grade had a different role in the build. The one of the sixth graders, they were building lifting devices for the marbles. And they required a piece they didn't know how to make. Know how to so, make. Their so their teams met virtually, met with, virtually an with an engineer from LED Dynamics, from LED Dynamics who was able to, was listen, able to, their to listen to their needs in real time, in real design, design a virtual model, model. Then he sent the file, sent to, the the file to the school, and we 3D printed it. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, um, as you may have heard, you may have also been experiencing an increase in our challenging interrupting student behaviors this year, particularly in our primary grades. Um, our school, 55% um, of our kids qualify for free or reduced lunch. We're seeing a lot, seeing of, a lot of increased material, material needs for students, needs for that, students are that are not traditionally met by schools. By schools. Um, things like clothing, um, things like clothing and, food and support and support finding housing, housing in the region. In response to those needs, we've started to build systems to support families and their families, including opportunities for wellness visits, from a nurse practitioner, from a nurse practitioner that, visits that visits on site. We installed a washer, we installed and, dryer a washer and dryer this year. And we've been working and with, uh, with uh, Willie on a snack program, program that provides a fresh fruit or vegetable every morning. We've also incorporated, We've also incorporated some, more some more proactive work, proactive work, work collaboration, and collaboration and kindness, and kindness into our universal, universal, universal instruction. instruction. Um, um, really kind of really keeping, kind up, our keeping up our morning meetings, our PBIS, our PBIS program. program. We have, we have a Dhyana from Yoga, which has been really, been really, wonderful, has been really for wonderful for kids. Um, we have assemblies we have for recognition, recognition, and all of those are, all part, of those are kind of part of our kind of tier one social emotional supports for kids. We were recently awarded an Act 129 mental health grant that's allowed us to hire a new staff member whose sole responsibility has been direct services, been direct for, services for students requiring more, require more targeted interventions. And up until, and up until this week, we had an open, open guidance position, and, position and, we just, and we just, um, she just um, was onboarded this, this week. week. So that's been really nice so to have that role filled in the building. So a full-time guidance staff for half time. Half time. Yes. Yeah, traditionally, yeah, traditionally we split with Brookfield. Um, Miller had the great, great idea this year of kind of splitting and what happened. happened. What happened. We, had somebody we had somebody lined up for the position in August and she couldn't find housing. Um, and so, um, and so, so our position has been open until now. By kind of by fracturing, kind of fracturing it, off. it off, Um, we had someone, um, we had someone interested, interested and she's been really, really wonderful so far. All of her experiences with secondary level, but she's kind of jumped in feet first. So it's been good. Can you do have time where they can be there every day? Every day, but just a few hours, or do you do it? Do you end up doing a day or two? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does two and a half, and days, days, right right and a half right days right now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm happy yeah, to answer I'm any happy questions, any you, have questions you have about Braintree or if I don't have information right away, happy to get those answers for you. Your enthusiasm, Your enthusiasm is so infectious. So infectious. I want to go to Braintree. I'm telling you, it is a really 
great place really to be. Great. I, felt really I felt really embarrassed when, when the, uh, the, the, uh, the newspeeper the interviewed me when I got the job. I got the job. It's magical. magical. And that was the headline that, the that they headline used. But really, used, it's like a really special place to be every day. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds like you guys Sounds are rocking. Like you guys are rocking it. What do you feel? What do you like feel your, like your um, your biggest your biggest hurdle or hurdle priority, or priority is? is. Like, like you guys are taking you guys a lot are taking on, a lot on independently, independently grant, writing, grant writing, doing, doing your, outdoor program, your outdoor program. What's your next? What's your next? Uh, uh, what's your next? What's your next? Ribbon to ribbon to. Oh, that's a great. Oh, that's a great. I think we're really trying to think about STEM programming and really trying to really trying to think about you know last year we had a STEM instructor one day that one day that was shared. Um, year, this year, our he's STEM our and STEM librarian, librarian and in the 40s, 40s a week, and really, week thinking, and really about thinking about how to integrate that back into classes. So it isn't, so it is just a standalone special, special for kids, but also what, but also what that looks like. like. You know, what does it look you know, like you know, what does it look like when you can 3D print something, something, for, your something for your science project? project. What, does project? Like, what does it look like um, when you when actually did this really cool project where they made like stop motion comics to go with like stories that they had written? So really thinking about the integration of all of those skills. I, I mean, I, in I mean, of in need, terms of need, our interrupting student, student behaviors substantially, substantially impact our day, um, especially, um, at, the especially at the primary grade. Grades. And so thinking and about so thinking how, about how I, in terms of in a terms of a district, we're district working on tier we're working one, tier one instruction, we're instruction, we're going to try to train, train all staff, including, staff, including veteran staff, staff retrain, retrain in response in response classroom techniques. Classroom techniques. Um, um, but that's but that's really where we that's really where we spend the bulk of our the bulk of our time. I'm sure that kids are ready. Kids are ready. Thinking about how to involve families more. Thinking about um, kindergarten, about readiness, kindergarten readiness, um, um, and and just and, how, and to just how to support the, 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 needs, of the needs of our community. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything going, there on, anything going on at Braintree that you think it could be, it could be um, um, generalized, generalized, or, or applied in other applied places in other places our district? Because, because, because Braintree seems, Braintree to, seems to perform at a, at a higher level than higher level than the other. If, as the board, as the board, yeah. overseeing, yeah. overseeing yeah. Three, three elementary schools, three elementary schools. How can, how can, what can we take? What can we what take? Lessons can we take what lessons can we take from Braintree? Hear your question. Hear your question. Um, you know, it actually um, you know, ties, it actually into, ties the, into the to the, the challenges, challenges that we're also, that experiencing, we're also this experiencing this year. As year. I as, as I, I talk to my colleagues across, across, the state, across the state, um, I think um, we have think really, we have strong, really strong, really strong teacher, teacher, teacher to student relationships. relationships. Um, um, I think where our think work needs to be is the student to student relationships. We're working a lot of collaboration. I brought in four H to work with our intermediate students on leadership. Kindness and, and kindness and with one working another. with one another. Um, but, but the way but that the way kids, that kids know, that they know that they have an adult, adult, one adult, adult, one adult building, in the building, um, I think um, they know think every, they know day, every that day that the teachers are showing up for them. Um, and that's not to say that they are in other schools, in other schools, in other every, day. schools every day. Um, but brain tree teachers, like, teachers, like if you think I'm if you think enthusiastic, I'm enthusiastic about brain tree, about listen, brain tree to, listen to some teachers. Listen to some teachers. Like, folks like, really, really love it there. Love it there. I am not one to say schools are like a family. Like a family. <laughs> I let people have their family. <laughs> have their family. Um, um, but really, but like, really like, have each other's have each other's adults in our building. In our building are really strong. And the teachers are at the top of their game. I came into this role as an instructional coach. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a math specialist, specialist by trade, by kind trade of. Kind of. Um, um, and, and and I go into and every, I go single into every single classroom, classroom and I am learning something new every single new day. Every single Brain tree teachers, Brain are, teachers at are at the top of their game. Top of their game. Um, pedagogically, um, pedagogically, instructionally, it's, it's, a, really, it's like, a really vibrant, like, and, vibrant exciting and exciting place to be. They, they, they were early adopters of every program that the district was working on. From STEM to math, ELA, and they just stay embraced. It and they ran, um, and, so um, and so that's a good piece, a good of, piece of it. She is exactly, exactly right in terms of just the, the happiness of the staff to be there. It's, 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 it's wonderful to go in and walk because you can just feel it in the hallways. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But they were they were, they were, they were, they were early adopters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say so. Um, um, we have a really have remarkable, really remarkable you know, Stephanie Cole, Cole is a really Cole wonderful, really new math teacher to the district. To the district. She comes to us from Texas. Um, she's new um, she's this new year, but this she's, year, a, but she's experienced a experienced veteran, veteran teacher. Veteran teacher. Um, she's, licensed um, she's licensed in general elementary math. She's licensed in middle school math. She's licensed for gifted and talented. She's licensed for special ed. She's like the best. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of it. But when they had kind of a department meeting amongst math teachers, Betty Young kind of saw that spark in her, and RES teachers have already been coming in to do some peer observations. So there are some of those things happening to really kind of see where the magical pockets are, because um, they are. Yeah. That's great. 
Thank yeah. You. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> And thanks again for coming twice. Really, it, I really, yeah. thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so here we are. Let's move on to EL reports two point three and two point six. Um, these are our second no, no, read. These are our I, first. Um, to, to do these, I um, took his work from last year and made some small updates. Okay. Kind of um, cross training and, and getting ready for May and June. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, so this is the first read. Questions from the board? Concerns? Clarifications needed? What's well, up? We have time to review and we can stop in and see what the questions, yep. right? Before. Yeah, she, we'll got, she got introduced the to the notebook. Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, first read. So, do your homework. Read them through. Come up with questions, concerns. Go in and see the evidence. Always, always available. Okay. So if. Heather, you have nothing to say about it, then well, I'm going I mean, to move I mean, on. I, I, very, there were very small changes. You yeah. Know, um, min, many things were exactly as they were. Updates of dates. Um, updates. I updated the evidence in the binders. Um, uh, we, of importance in, uh, we'll do in the financial conditions and activities. We allude to, um, was it in... The one regarding the IRS, is that number seven? Yes. Mm -hmm. in seven, uh, you'll see in the evidence that we allude to an anomaly that occurred. Um, actually, the issue was seven years ago, but it came apparent this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not. The board was surprised at the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. The board was surprised at the time. We did not include any employee confidentiality data in this sure. report, so it could remain public. But if you want update on what that is, we're happy to provide it. Um, other than that, I do not think there are significant changes from last year. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm getting used to these glasses. I don't know how to tip my head. Um, and you, sorry. When you start progressing towards old age. Yeah, I know. I know. Jeez. <laughs> Um, but you give me a minute to figure this out. Annual meeting on budget. That's more just. To, that's on leap year, right? Yeah. So um, the annual right, meeting, the annual budget meeting is 6 p.m. Um, in the auditorium here at uh, at the high school. It'll be on February 29th, which is a Thursday. This will be the last budget presentation to the community and the last opportunity for the community to ask questions and and get all the details. Um, there's also the annual school meeting, which is a little bit different. That's on March 4th, the night before the vote. Um, and that's where we do things like we vote on who the officers are for next year, you know, the treasurer, um, things like that. And then they also do a vote on approving the language in the annual reports. It, um Linda continued to be our treasurer this year, right? She, she, she's there, so, she's yeah. there until, at least until uh, the vote that, that would happen on that annual meeting date. Okay, and then and then what happens? Well, what, what we'll do is we'll find somebody who's interested if Linda is not, and okay. then we'll nominate. I'm a, our, okay. I'm a Randolph resident, so I can nominate. Yeah, Great. What, else what, does. Time, okay. what time is that meeting? Oh, so that one is on March 4th. That's also 6 p.m., and that's in the RUH Auditorium. When Peter Nolan comes in and yeah, is right, the, yeah, uh, right. the facilitator for that. When something's in the auditorium, is remote an option? Yeah, I always do remote Great. for the last okay. couple of years, especially for the budget presentation because I, I usually get people online. Um, and if it's recorded, you know, people do watch the, the recordings quite a bit, so it's always awesome yeah. when Orca's there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What Excellent. That, Let's. The March 4th meeting, is that called like the school district meeting? A annual school meeting. Annual school. Annual, annual, yes, school. annual meeting. 
It's great when board members can be present, especially in person. Yeah, um, I can do the 4th. I can't do the 29th one. Me too. I can definitely do the 29th. So. That, and that's just the budget presentation. Yeah. So we usually get a couple of folks that will be there and a couple of folks online. But yeah. um, do, like I said, if it's if it's recorded, people do. I think think they said about three to four. Is this the link you're going to so. use? The one that's on your invite? Yeah, if it's already up there, if Kyle already put it in. She did. Yeah. Okay. So. And I've been I've emailed out one round of reminders of dates and things. Mm -hmm. And so as this gets a little closer, I'll start to up it. Put the put the link in there. So I'll invite the board. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. This is March fourth. I don't. And then you said the next one is when. Is the 29th. The 29th. The 29th. That's the was the budget information. And the meeting. budget information. And, you know, we don't necessarily need that information, but I think just plain mm -hmm. presence. Where is that is one great for be? people to They're see? Both high school auditorium. Both at the auditorium. Oh, okay. It's on the agenda. Oh, the very bottom. Yeah, they're usually getting ready for the musical, so sometimes the stage is a little awkward, right. but it's fun to see what they're Backdrop working on. Backdrop never hurts. Yeah, it's fun to see what they're working on. <laughs> um... Ah, yes, the update on the d benefits request from, yeah. well, the failed meeting in Brookfield, I think it was, and then mm -hmm. the... Mm -hmm. So the Robin has time. been in contact with the state. Um, they've asked for all previous contracts from, from Colin, so we've provided that to them. Mm -hmm. What they are doing right now is assessing, you know, how far back they are able to go and what the cost would be. And so that's okay. what we're waiting on right now. And once So we something is possible. And then it would come to back to us again once we have a figure? Uh, depending upon the dollar amount. Uh -huh. um, if it's something that's low enough that we can absorb it in the regular budget, if not, then it might potentially be looking at, you know, asking for money from the operational reserve. Reserve. Fund. Okay. Yeah. Were you going to look into, too, to see if there were any other employees? Catherine Fredericks, and, and we've taken care of her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hers, was, hers was just a couple of years. Okay. So, yeah, we did what, take a what, peek. What's her role? She is a K-12 English kind of director. She oversees kind of curriculum for English. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's so. She's been fantastic. She's like the, Betty, Betty Young is math and Catherine okay, she's is the OA. Yeah. Yeah. So with Colin's situation, um, was he a private contractor or was he employed by the district for... He was he was employed by the district um, during the cost cutting years, um, and so we were kind of looking at the contracts to see what was in them. My guess is based upon how the contracts were written, because they kind of seemed to change over the years before I was here, um, is that they're probably not going to accept all of them um, based upon how they were written. Um, and then ones that were a little bit more recent, the state probably will say, yeah, these should have been. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because when he first started, wasn't he splitting time with another school? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, long before my time. Okay. I do know that the, the big concern was there were, there were a lot of special contracts being given. Um, it was actually one of the first things that, you know, when I talked about, you know, uh, I've been here seven years, and we've had five grievances. One of them was just that was in my first year was because of all the special contracts from the previous year. And, you know, some of these folks really should be allowed in the union um, and not on a special contract. I actually agreed with them. Um, and so that, that was easy to work out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. If, you, just... got a, if you got an AOE license and you're working with kids... <clears throat> that's you're in the union, um, and, and you shouldn't be getting a special contract. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the AOE, they'll decide at this point. Yeah. What so the state will. Yeah. yeah. What's what's valid? What's acceptable? What's not? And and if you do the whole thing, you know, there's a dollar amount. I mean, that's one of the things the board could decide is. You know, okay, you know, based upon the number of years, maybe it's only 10 years that we give, maybe it's, you know, five, maybe it's the entire thing uh, that the state says is, he's eligible for. Okay. So, 
But hopefully yeah, we'll, just, get the, we'll get the information from them. Part of it was um, it was delayed a little bit because the original ask was just before the holidays. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're pretty good, but they're doing some sort of quarterly reports right now. And they said they'd have the final numbers for us as soon as they're done that work. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I just, yeah, I just want to be mindful of whatever future precedent we set for private contractors or 1099s because... Yeah. In, in our business, in my business, we use that as a huge advantage. In this, like we pay more significantly, but we don't carry the the fringe, all the the benefits. Yeah, the benefits. yeah. yeah and I think the state state will weed that up. But I'm happy to. I haven't looked at all the old contracts. Like we were letting the state do the eval on it, but I'm happy to take a look and see what they were. All right. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things I was looking for early on was you know. Did was he given a higher salary because they weren't paying mm -hmm. certain benefits, and that did not appear to be the case, at least in the the, the pieces that I saw. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Good, good. questions. Yeah. Make, uh, ma making me change folders in my head, so it takes me more <laughs> to pull it up. Um. So <clears throat> this next item update on the superintendent search, um, consideration of recommendation from the. Uh, screening committee and a discussion of this upcoming schedule. It's listed as Jackie, <laughs> um, uh, who of course who Elaine has taken over for. Elaine is not able to be here tonight. She and I have spoken every day this week. I believe Katya, you're going to give a brief. Yeah, I think some. I think all of us from the screening committee can fill in pieces here because um, I did ask for what what we're supposed to relay in public. Mm -hmm. uh, in our public meeting versus not our public meetings. So right, I and I, th I think you were correct in your assumption, to, in your question to her that to that the recommendation oh, okay. can be can be public okay. can be public, but the but other information others, can't be okay. correct. Um, okay, so um, yes. we did convene the screening committee that was made up of representatives from across the district. Um, we met, um, as you mentioned, Hannah, we had um, started with one, a consultant, and then we just recently switched to Elaine, who's been supporting us um, with this task. So we met with uh, the screening committee yesterday, um, did put forth two candidates um, to be um, brought in front of the board. Michael Clark, um, who's currently the superintendent of Grand Idol Supervisor Union, and Lisa Floyd, who is currently um, Orange Southwest principal of RUHS. Um, we have a community forum tomorrow night um, for individuals from our community to meet these two candidates. Um, for the board, what we need to do is we need to pick a date to um, have our final round interviews, um, proposing that be the week of the 19th, so it's sometime next week. Um, <clears throat> for this process to keep moving forward on the schedule that was originally um, prescribed to us. And just about tomorrow, um, uh, in terms of the community forum, I would love for as many board members to be there as possible. I'll be just kind of welcoming people and, and saying hi, hello. Um, and then Sean Robinson. Yep. yep, thank you. Um, we'll actually be moderating in terms of kind of the kickoff questions um, that he can ask and then ask for questions from the public. There's a lot going on tomorrow night. We've got the, hopefully we'll have background music, frankly, um, from the auditorium. There's also a basketball game. So, you know, I think we can glass half full it and say lots of people will be in the building. So, you know, that may that may up attendance. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to say publicly on the record how much I appreciate the work um, of the, the screening committee. That was a big commitment, time, thought, um, get, weighing, uh, coming up with questions. You know, it just, it, boy, it looked like a lot from the outside, so well, I can only imagine um, from the inside. So thank you, thank you um, for your work both to the three board members and um, to the staff that mm -hmm. were on it as well. Um, can I ask a question? You can ask a question, sure. So 
you have the 10 candidates that you narrow down to two. What kind of opportunities have had, obviously, the RUHS uh, principal has had time to be interacting with the community. What kind of opportunity does any other candidate have, or is that? So that's tomorrow at the forum. <coughs> but, but is it, I mean, have they had a chance to meet and greet with people? They'll be here all day tomorrow doing okay. site visits at the school. Okay. So right. um, Kara, nice. Houston, and yeah. Sean. Yeah. Um, are kind of acting as the ambassadors of that of the site visits. So they'll be inside the schools. They'll have an opportunity to. They're kind of having a forum with the, with staff, the staff, as I understand right. it. Um, and then that evening, yeah, will be the the community okay. forum. And and the purpose of both of those forums is not just to have time with the candidate, but then for the community and or the staff to um, send, provide feedback. There provide a, feedback. There's going to be a form for people to fill in their impressions <clears throat> so that, and they can, and the board will be collecting that. Our consultant's going to consolidate all of that for us. So that will go into our process next week or the week after, depending mm -hmm. on when we do our final uh, interview of these two candidates and make our selection. Yeah, and, and j just to be clear, so the screening, I keep wanting to call it a steering committee. The screening committee, this is a recommendation to the board that, that these are the two finalists, um, and, and we'll go into final interviews with them. Um, uh, I just want to make clear this is a multi-layered process, and you know, ultimately, yes, one would hope that we, we come out with a <coughs> higher hope you know there's no guarantee I need to put that out there as reality for everybody um, back to Katya what you were saying about a meeting like next week let's write in yes, we real time right get that on the books yeah um, we need uh, it'd be great to have a hundred percent board uh, presence and participation there I understand it's a vacation week um, but lucky you if you're traveling. <laughs> I'm not. So uh, I think um, Anne, you had provided a, a few times that you were available, and that's always, I think, helpful to kind of have a jumping off point. Um, yeah. Um, if everyone could take out their calendars. Um, I'm, I also, well, no, that's not true. So Chelsea, I think, said that she can do any day except Tuesday. Okay. Next week, it sounds like. Okay. Um, Sam said any time next week. And I think you had said Thursday was an option for you. Thursday is open for me. Wednesday, I just I the afternoon is not so available. So Tuesday or Thursday of next week. Uh, uh, Thursday is better for Tuesday. me. Tuesday. So should we just say Thursday, the twenty-first? I could do that. It's remotely. the twenty-second. I'll be out of town. Twenty-second. Thursday, Friday next week, but I can join remotely. Okay. Okay. Great. Twenty-second. Thursday, the twenty-second. Thursday, the twenty-second, going once. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, um, what kind of time? How much? Yeah. What are we? Are we thinking middle of day or evening? Um. I, I'm going to throw out four o'clock. I that can be shot down me. easily, but I can make that happen. You have to see. Sure. Um, why don't we all write down Thursday the twenty-second at four o'clock? Let's go home. Let's check our schedules. Um, and please, if you can, get back to me confirming that that time is indeed good for you by end of business day tomorrow, so by 5 o'clock tomorrow. I can confirm that now. It's verbal. Okay. That's, yeah. Can we email you know it to you? Yeah. Email to if you everyone right could email me, that would be great. Do we have a, um, an estimate of how long this meeting would occur? So would, our interviews were an hour. I would expect okay. that they're at least that per candidate. Um, and then we have to deliberate after right. that. So and I, I 
I would imagine Elaine's going to be with us, yeah. mm -hmm. um, guiding us through this process. She's probably going to want maybe a half an hour in the beginning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to just sort of help us settled. review questions, um, mm -hmm. settle in, know kind of what we need to be doing. So four seven thirty. <laughs> Let's do it just block four to eight, if four you will. Four to eight, I would say, at least. Yep. And you'll be in touch with Kyle to warn it? Indeed. Yes. Yep. It'll be executive session, just mm -hmm. in case mm -hmm. anybody There will be public comment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, typically, the, there are, we go oh, the final one is typically public. Like... They're recorded. You can see them on the internet from all over the nation. The interview, the interview or the not the interview. interview. Yeah. Uh, the I check would, with check yeah. with your consultant. We'll talk to them. I, yeah. yeah. Check with your consultant. Yeah, because we're recording yeah. tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. So twenty second, four o'clock. Big. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, and I, as a steering committee member, I will also say thank you for arranging the food. I think that was maybe somebody part of the school because you, we have this in our budget so to approve. So thank you for arranging for our, us being fed yesterday. It was very appreciated. My pleasure. The sandwiches were epic. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell Willie. It was Willie. a chocolate chip cookies for me. Hey, <laughs> rub it in. All right. Oh, by all means. I'm the next one. It's all yours. <laughs> Um, okay, awesome. Uh, do, 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 board governance policy 3.0. It's a short one, but it's a big one. The board's sole official connection to the operational organization, its achievements, and its conduct will be through the superintendent of schools. It's one that comes up often. Um, it's one that, speaking on a personal level, is very much needed to be reminded of for myself. Um, and it's a tricky one for me <clears throat> to, uh, to, to not feel like it's a, oh boy, I can't, you know, there's a teacher, shouldn't talk to them. Um, which is obviously not its intent, but I think it's easy to, yeah. Anyway, I'm jumping off there because it's a tricky one for me. I don't even know how to talk about it. Well, I think we've seen in our own conversations here sometimes, um, you know, maintaining the policy governance um, kind of mantle of all this can be challenging and not kind of getting a little bit into dipping into the operational. I think we've gotten better at, at recognizing when we're stepping into areas that is not appropriate for the board to step in or trying to connect it to where does this sit within a policy of ours. Um, but yeah, I think that's. Well, and I think I it's important to remember that it doesn't, it's, it's a connection. It's not a disconnect. It's a connection. It's just we have a conduit mm -hmm. for that connection. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I think we're good at rerouting ourselves, especially if we're in, I, I think I can say to the, in reference to our meetings, when we're together as a board, I think we're fairly good at, at being able to kind of check each other and say, this kind of leans into operational, mm. you know, where is this, where do we see this in our policy? Um, I know, Anne, you're very good at, at, at recognizing those pieces too, so I appreciate that, so thank you. Um, but yeah, I think there's always, um, I think especially, again, this is the, the challenge of living in a small community, too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, where a lot of lines can blur. Um, and I think it's hard to sometimes remember that when we're in this role, you know, this is what we represent even in other circumstances where we may run into people in a community setting. Um, so being careful of what we say or how we act or how we represent ourselves. I would also look at it as a, it's an opportunity also to help the public understand what our role is. Mm. You know, not that, oh, you can't say anything to me or I can't talk to you because I'm on the board. 
that's not realistic, but but to be able to say to someone in the public, you know, I can't speak for the board. Uh, sounds like you have a concern. Your concern sounds like it's with the teacher of your student, or maybe it's with the, you know, the administrator of the building. You can you can help direct people to where they're they're going. It's just that you can't then go in and and solve their problem. You know, like right. oh, talk to me and I'll go in and make this right for you. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it's going to work, but just to help the public understand kind of what our role is and how we function. Mm -hmm. And always, you know, they can always, if they really want to go up the chain of command, the door is open at the, at the top, too. Mm -hmm. give, give them a call. Give the next person a call. Anybody else? Want to score us? Yeah, I mean, I think we do this pretty well, as hard as it may be. Um, and as frustrating as it may be for some people in the public when they do want a response, and we respect our role as to say, you gotta, you gotta go through the proper channels. Mm -hmm. Work in progress, always a work in progress, especially with something as uh, tricky as policy governance. It's hard. It's challenging. Do you feel like this is one of the <clears throat> one of the things that, especially for as we're bringing in new board members, um, likely well, we will be bringing in new board members at our next. Um, for our next meeting, like this is one that I think really is one of those that like you have to help people understand that pretty quickly. Yep. Yeah. Um, because again, people who don't, all of us came on here, or I, I shouldn't say all of us, but we didn't have backgrounds in policy governance. And that was, especially if you came on as a parent who'd been involved in your, in your child's school, that was an interesting, like it was a really different thing to be. Um, to get used to um, as far as how you did have that kind of access to anyone as a parent and as a board member it changes it shifts so um, I think that that's just one that we should kind of keep as a forethought of like when we're onboarding new members that this really becomes something that they they understand quickly I think it's perfectly placed in the self-evaluation schedule as it were that we're talking about it now and Absolutely. I also just want to acknowledge that the way that we talk about our self-evaluation, thinking back to that, not chart we used to do, but the scoring thing that, you know, no one ever wanted to do, and mm -hmm. we spent 12 seconds on it at the end of the meeting. Um, the, the way that we're talking about these policies and how we understand them or don't understand them, I think, is, is really productive. Excellent. We good? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Okay. Great. Uh, report out on governance training. Anne, how was it? Uh, it was excellent. And Sarah, um, Sarah, were you able to go? I wasn't. Uh, my son's birthday was that day, so. So no. Okay, no, I wasn't. <laughs> um, but Heather and I attended, and um, because we had three, we were able to sign everybody up because they weren't going to charge any more after three. three. Yep. So you all should have gotten, and I'm, I'm having Heather just pull up the email. So Debbie Singeiser mm -hmm. is the, um, she's the person at the VSBA who um, specializes in policy governance. Um, she and now I'm going to blank on the other woman's name who I've met before. Is Jean? Jean. Jean Collins. There we go. It's Collins. Oh, she's, right? Yeah, she's yep. awesome. Yes, yep. she was over in um, Rutland. Uh, Ru the Rutland area. Thursday, uh, March 7th. That's mm -hmm. great. Uh, what is that? Otter Valley yep. um, District. 
And uh, so the two of them uh, did the overview of policy mm -hmm. governance. So the, the uh, beginning presentation was recorded. So there's a link to the recording. And then she also included, um, uh, there's also a link to a shared folder that has all sorts of policy governance information, some links to some other school boards. So the really nice thing about the training is we were with all, a bunch of other districts who are using policy governance. So I don't know if Heather noticed, but uh, because Brent K had brought policy governance really to Vermont, our district was sort of, everybody was sort of like, ah, oh, the OSA, the OSA, you know, because um, we sort of introduced it, or I shouldn't say we, the, our district in its history had introduced it around the state and sort of promoted it. Um, and so, but it was, it was really, I, I thought it was a really good training. It was really interesting to hear what other districts are grappling with. Um, we have several virtual sessions. They're listed there um, where they're going to cover certain things, one of them being monitoring. Um, and then one of the things that we covered uh, during the training was just looking at um, like state required and federal required policies and then governance policies and how districts put them on their websites. And so you'll notice in uh, one of the, I think, was it even in the, in the presentation maybe, uh, they had, they used examples from different websites. And I was looking again at our website and uh, the one that I liked, and I would encourage the rest of the board to take a look, but I thought Mount Mansfield Union High School, or mm, I think it's dist school district now. Are they a district or are they a union? I forget. I don't but know. But anyway, I liked the way they had their policies set up in on their website. and. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think that's something we could look at because even, um, you know, we're, we were interviewing candidates and a couple of them mentioned going to our website to look at things and, and stuff wasn't there. So, um, or it was just hard to navigate. Um, and I think it could be um, mm -hmm. put up a little bit more clearly um, and for the general public like we're not we don't have any of our monitoring reports up there that's our accountability that's where we're showing you know how we're keeping uh, you know accountability to making sure certain things are not happening and to making sure certain things are happening and those reports aren't listed on our website um, and procedures, um, what I liked about uh, the way Mount Mansfield did it was um, they also listed their procedures, so like the complaint procedure could be there. Um, so anyway, um, that's something I think we should think about as, um, as a board. And I believe, was it in that section? Onboarding new board members, I think, is That's like the first, the first mm -hmm. uh, thing. And, and we really need to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, most policy governance boards will review, do a full board review, because you really, when you reorganize <laughs> with new members, you, everybody needs to kind of get that reorientation. So the slight may change, too. So, you know. Yeah may change roles on the board too. Mm -hmm. Right, new. right, right, so. That's on the 7th at 6 p.m. From If you didn't get the email, that's the drop-in. Yeah, in. everybody should have gotten that policy governance, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. except for those folks like Chelsea, sorry, but you're not, <laughs> she's not returning. So we only did the, the members. I should, I'll talk to Debbie and see if we can put the new people on when they come in. I don't know if we can. <laughs> but we might be able to just Forward add it. them in. Can we not uh, just share, share it? The email? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then they'll oh. have the link. 
Yeah, then they'd have the link. Yeah, I. We'll ask. Yeah, I'll ask just to I'm be sure a rule she'll... follower. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but any questions? I was on there. <laughs> Definitely wanted to. Mm -hmm. I right. appreciate you representing us you. there. Yeah, no problem. Getting us access to the. You get some water. Okay. Um, dun -dun -dun. Equity policy. Okay, yes. Um, now, I'm not sure I've done this as I should because this is just a recommended policy. So, this isn't one of the governance policies. Like this is right. Mm -hmm. And so it, but it includes language in the recommended policy that an annual report will be given to the board. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll go through what I have, uh, but I do want to let you know that I think there's some interest in students working on this and bringing it back to you in May mm -hmm. with a more robust, right? With some awesome. student voice and the students coming. Mm -hmm. So, um, so let me just, uh, Basically, the policy as we've adopted it, as recommended, has um, uh, seven provisions in it. So I, for each provision, I reported on some data. But I definitely know that if we, you do permit us to come back in May with some students, we can have more. Um, so I analyzed just the uh, Caucasian to minority data, which across the district was 92% Caucasian and 8% minority. When I broke it out by schools, um, it varied between um, uh, 7 to 10 percent. Uh, actually, it's lower at the tech center, which we'll talk about mm. in this report. Um, and male to female, I was very surprised to find that this 50 percent male and only 46 percent female, uh, which was interesting. And I would like to add to this, um, if we are permitted to come back to May, information about our um, language uh, learners who identify as ELL. And it's much harder to get data mm -hmm. on um, students who identify as LGD, LGBTQ plus. It has to like go to classroom to classroom, you know, this type of thing. It's not yeah. in our student information system. Mm -hmm. But I think getting students involved will be able to get more of that information. And as far as our socioeconomic information, as Patty shared, um, Braintree's up to 55% identifying, right? The largest amount that is that is the highest, wow. um, but both the high school and the central Randolph Elementary School are at 40. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll get that data as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the second uh, provision is asking that we are the ensuring high quality curriculum, um, access to facilities and technology. So I um, put in some information there about curriculum access to special education services. We have, uh, we only have about 880 students in the entire district, and 149 of them are on IEPs. And um, additional 65 have 504 plans, which is for uh, medical disabilities, and another 74 are on educational support. Um, so there's a lot of accommodation available in this district. As far as adaptive technology, um, we get students what they need, as, as evidenced by the iPad Braille printers, Braille computers, the Phonec audio systems, um, to uh, provide universal design for students with hearing difficulties. I've also given you a chart here on how we're doing right now with ADA compliant facilities and spaces in all US uh, in all of our buildings. So I've given you a chart there with the school. Um, where we're doing well with ADA compliance for spaces and opportunities for improvement. And you can see that uh, there are a few spaces that cannot be accessed by a wheelchair-bound student in the district, and I've outlined those spaces such as our weightlifting facility in the high school, the mezzanine in um, Brookfield, and the central office uh, second floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, provision 3 speaks about um, that effort will be made to analyze this data to provide equity of access to uh, staff and other resources in each school. And as you heard when people came out to speak about RISE, this is a sort of a hot topic, right? And so this is another place where I'd like to add a lot more data. We've just recently begun to use DESA at the elementary level and Wayfinder at the high school level 
to learn more about social and emotional needs. Um, but could be added to this report um, information about behavior data, HHB incidents, and um, Title IX infractions. But I found, again, that that data was not easily uncovered and is, I could have given it to you for last year for our state reporting, but current State of the Union, where we are right now, it's, we compile it annually at the end of the year. So I should be able to have that for you in May uh, with student voice. Um, uh, provision four is that we're taking in information, perspectives from families, perspectives from students and the community. So I, um, as you know, Lane has been diligent with having open forums, mm -hmm. listening sessions. In addition, the, um, the board engaged in the portrait of a graduate last year, and moving forward, we are uh, contracting with uh, for learning for the youth, youth risk behavior data um, called Getting to Why. Um, and we are using all of that information to inform our programming. Uh, provision five um, ensures equity of access. Um, and looks at disparities in opportunity gaps. So what I've provided with you in this first report is a look at AP and Tech Center. Uh, sort of this like, um, just a snapshot. You know, I, I considered looking at other classes, but I thought this would really say something. And I found, I was really dismayed um, by some of what we found. Yeah, I see, I see you, yeah. Yeah, um, this is really, Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, mm -hmm. hard to look at. Right. So you can see there's a there's a really m mostly white males enrolled in our AP programming, and uh, in our tech center as well. Um, so there's definitely room for improvement there, and I think you guys had some great recommendations for like advertising and other ways we could improve access to the tech programming. But I really want to hear from students about this, like the highest level <coughs> courses, why, and how, how might we, right, invite, you know, females and people of color to explore those, you know, highest level courses. I'd like to add to this, I didn't get it, but I would like to add dual enrollment, like students yeah. who are accessing, yeah. uh, right, interesting. college. I'm going to actually make a note on, to myself on that. And, um... Okay, provision six um, is regarding professional development to ensure that our staff is prepared to provide, you know, um, culturally responsive and uh, culturally relevant uh, instruction. Mm -hmm. And um, I cited that we, the RUHS students, created and provided microaggression training to the RUHS staff. Um, and they're going to do it again. So it was rescheduled, but then we had a snow day. Mm. So it's going to be rescheduled again, and I'm happy to invite you guys if you would like to come because it's pretty powerful to hear from students, like, their experience of being marginalized. Um, and also I cited that we have just finished uh, professional development with Greg Stoller, he came for two half PD days to give our elementary staff tools on behavioral responsiveness. Um, and we have upcoming on March 4th, um, unpacking bias training, um, which we funded with um, our Stronger Connections grant. And then finally, provision seven is regarding the creation of a strategic plan that aligns to all of these goals and our portrait of a graduate. And so I've cited in here that this is work to be done. This needs to be, in my opinion, this needs to be work for the next superintendent that's done. And it's gonna take time, it's a big project. Um, but it needs to have many voices and, and be done. So uh, I'd welcome your feedback on this initial report. It's in the board packet. 
Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, can you repeat the socioeconomic percentages again? I don't have them exactly <coughs> right. Oh, okay. However, in my recollection, Patty just cited over 50% students living in poverty at Braintree. Okay. And I believe, I don't have the exact percentage, but I know that Randolph Elementary and Randolph High School are both in the low 40% mm -hmm. students in poverty. I think it's 41, 42 in that range. Okay. Where and could we get those I, um, exact numbers? I, I probably have I it. Public, it but, yeah. I, but if you want to proceed, I can like get it printed, hand it out. I don't need out. it like right now. I'm just, oh, okay. just curious. Willie yeah. Walker, yeah. our um, director of child nutrition, com is compelled to compile all of this data for what used to be free and reduced lunch. Right. But we can now use data that's connected to people's access to Dr. Dinosaur Medicaid yeah. mm -hmm. and people's okay. access to food support, mm -hmm. which has greatly brought truth to, to our game. numbers. Mm -hmm. It's brought truth because mm -hmm. people didn't want to fill out the form. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so online too. I'm curious right. so I will get to now that they're it's across the board with offering mm -hmm. free lunch to everyone. How are they collecting that data? Is exactly. it Dr. Dinosaur or is? Right, so, so we still ask for the FNR form. Okay. And we're permitted to use um, Medicaid information. Okay. And permitted to use um, food assistance. Mm -hmm. The, I think it's called SNAP, the EBT, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Food assistance. Okay. And our numbers were so significant that we were given a three-year um, lock that we can use, we don't have to keep proving it for three years. So we have universal meals, breakfast, lunch, and we're moving to do the after-school program meal um, for three years. Great. It's really it, that that is that is great. But I will I have Willie give me those numbers and forward them to the board. Quick comment: I heard that the um, food pantry in town here there. Up 63% over last year in the amount of people that are going through. Yeah, they're still, they're doing all the school vacation programs still yeah. and SMART program. Yeah, and and they still, Skip is coming up next week. Yeah. And they still got yep. food for thought coming out of the high school that yep. uh, Colin and Jason are on. There's mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of supplies that are going out. I just want to say that I would welcome. <clears throat> all any and all updates and and interpretation and um, different voices so it I am all for you returning with this kind of information with students um, and this can also be used as evidence under our global 2.0 because we added the language of inequitable mm -hmm. So it can be can be part of what's listed as the evidence that we are moving, that we are being equitable. Thank you. I'm interested, the LGBTQ plus mm -hmm. being included with the RTCC is because... Well, see, for, to get that data, yeah. I was able to just have a conversation with the principal. Mm -hmm. And she knows the population's small. Mm -hmm. And so, or with the teachers, and because we don't put that data into our SIS, our student right. information system, so you have to interview people. Like, how many of your students identify right. to you? That have this, come out yes. as I did, right. Exactly. Right. And so that's how I was able to get that data. Mm -hmm. That came from Nika and the teachers. Right. Whereas at the high school, given the time constraint, I wasn't yep. able to... And plus, I didn't do a full analysis, but I think when I get the students involved, they're going to want to do that. Okay. They're going to be curious mm -hmm. and want to say, okay, we know this is a portion of our population. We know they're, they're often marginalized. Mm -hmm. Do they have access to, and we'll see what measures they think are important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The female to male ratio just yeah, it's really is really, I find it quite disturbing and and puzzling. Mm -hmm. Right. Because your your ratio is not, I mean, it's off a bit, but it's not that drastic between right. male to female 46. ratio in the right. school district. Right. Yep. 
but when you see these higher, you know, these advanced classes and then RTCC, it's interesting to see the discrepancies between the two. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also if you think about our students, I, I, I really um, shouldn't have labeled this BIPOC because I put also other and Asian. Like anyone who wasn't Caucasian, I put together and say we're typically at 10%, mm -hmm. right? 90% Caucasian, 10% um, BIPOC, Asian, and other. In, in, um, the numbers aren't in line. If there are 13 seats in AP World History and there are zero students who are not Caucasian, mm -hmm. where's that one student, right? I, there's just, I think yeah, there's, there's an opportunity here, which I think is good yeah. for us to be yeah. able to see it in this kind of a Absolutely. Demo. So, yeah. um, thank you. Uh, if my next, I've already spoken with um, some of the teachers at the high school who work with groups of students, and they're eager to have students create a survey and students do some of this work. Great. Yeah. Cool. And I took way more than my two minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Uh, That's okay. This keep is keep us informed and send out those invites. It's very interesting. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I missed that. What? Uh, oh, the invite to the yes, yeah, send out the, the training. microaggression. The microaggression. Oh, yes, when it's rescheduled, I will be mm -hmm. happy to. Please. Uh, let's see. So the consent agenda. I'm trying to think if there are ones that we want to pull out. Um, or if, Lane, you wanted to touch on anything from here, the funds request or So there's, contacts. I can give you a, the funds request really brief overview if that's helpful. Great, yeah. So the, the M&T Bank, um, this is just changing the signatory. This is for a, uh, a scholarship fund um, that we maintain because uh, with Linda leaving, um, putting somebody new on there so that we, we have access to it. Mm -hmm. um, the combined balance, this crowd refund is an interesting one. Um, basically, the court, it's a, it's a scholarship. The court is the overseer of it. Um, and then once a year, we actually just provide them documentation for their oversight purposes that, yeah, the money's in there, we haven't done anything with it, or if we did do something with it, this is what we did. And so that's the documentation you see. Basically, it's just, it's, you see the principal and you see that there's interest each month because nothing's been taken out of it. They had some quirky, um, when the parents uh, put the money in for that fund, they wanted it to accrue interest until it reached a certain dollar amount and then we could start using it for scholarships, mm -hmm. that's still probably 10 to 15 years in the future before we get there. Mm -hmm. So, but this is just a reporting to the court just to say, yeah, this is the statement. Um, we agree with the, you know, the statement and then uh, we send it off to the court and that way they can say that they've done their oversight function for the year. Gotcha. Um, HVAC, this was a part of the big grant um, yeah. that didn't quite pay for everything to put in air conditioning, you know, the, the heat exchangers, the air conditioning and the, the, the heat at uh, Braintree. Mm -hmm. They needed a little extra ec electrical work to get things hooked up to the grid properly. And so it's a request for funding for that. Um, and then the last one, I believe, is funding for 30 radios. Um, radios are how we communicate yes, the kids safe when the parent, the teachers are taking them outside for the day. Mm -hmm. We also have a couple of schools, and you'll be getting a request um, for funding on this. Um, the elementary schools are having problems with their intercom systems as well. And so they need the radios to act in place of those intercom systems to make sure that everybody is, is notified if something happens. Um, but since they've already been doing work at RTCC and at the high school, they've already replaced those. Um, the same company is going to take a look. Um, it'll probably have to go out to bid, and then once we get dollar amounts to upgrade the two little schools, um, we'll put a, a reserve fund request in front of the board for that to get that work done. Okay. They have intercon systems are just bad. They're, yeah. Poor. They're not loud, they? loud enough for people to hear. Mm -hmm. How do they compare cost-wise with just having a phone, since phones do a lot of that already? That's, that's what they have right now. Um, they're, they're not loud enough to hear over the kids in the, in the normal day. And they've, they've done a lot of work to try to adjust that. Um, they don't need, the lucky part is it should be a lot less expensive at the, the elementary schools because they don't need the bells. 
right? So it's a it's a little bit pared down system compared to what they're using at like the high school. Right. It's the bell system and everything tied together and all the clocks and all the classrooms and. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, no, good question though. Does, does anyone have any changes to minutes? Should have started there. Any edits to make? Yeah. Good. Um, contracts. Any questions? Sounds like those were the two. Braintree and she was talking about started, yeah. Yeah. right, right. Uh, one of them's grant funded mm. with the act 112 mental health grant yep that Patty was mentioning yeah. well then I think we can take it as a whole kit and caboodle ah thank you appreciate so that moved. I that. have a motion from Katya and a second from Ann yes was that to approve the entire consent agenda um, further discussion all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chelsea. Opposed? Abstentions. Awesome. I will sign things. Uh, superintendent's report. Do you want to? Yeah, I can. A lot of that was, um, we touched on some of it when the legislators were here. It's just right. about the work that is happening at the state level to try to plug that loophole so it doesn't uh, affect everybody. Um, if it passes, like they said, um, and it has the desired effect, we should be either unchanged or we should actually benefit. Our, our tax mm -hmm. rate should actually be a little bit lower, uh, as far as I can tell. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that it passes. You've done a really good job communicating this. Yeah. If it doesn't pass, um, it may have an impact on the yield, depending upon how many districts take advantage of that loophole. And that might change your tax rates, might drive our tax rates up. Because <coughs> so, but I think I think they'll get it passed. They seem pretty confident, and I, I think I think they're they're right based upon what we're hearing from the the superintendents' association. I'm disappointed they didn't foresee that. It's kind of writing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do they think people just wouldn't know this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> do they think people are really dumb? No, I think they I think they probably they probably they probably <laughs> assume the positive. Uh, he thinks I'm really dumb. I know that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, uh, let's see. Financial report. Anything? We're we're on track. We're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Robin, believe me, if, if there's anything that sits funky there, she's the first one there. Flag it. Yeah. Yeah. She's um, awesome. yeah. Yeah. So action items. If you can come tomorrow night, seven o'clock, right here, please do. Um, uh, everybody should have in their calendar next Thursday, four o'clock. Um, but please do confirm with me by email by end of day tomorrow. Um. And just if you want to jot down the March 7th drop-in online about onboarding new members to policy governance, I have it on my list, so I'm mentioning it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it for action items. I think uh, there is a need for an executive session based on the two things listed there. Um, so, no. Uh, so I will entertain a motion. Move to enter executive, executive session at 824, um, inviting in Lane and Heather um, for a personnel discussion. And 4,500. And 4,500 report. So Kyle, Katya made that motion and Sarah seconded it. I don't know why I'm leaning this way. I should <laughs> lean that way. And can I just recuse from conversation, but stay for the report? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Seen um, not heard, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's our favorite way to have you say. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, so 824. Thank you. We'll see you there, Chelsea.